Hey everyone, Notorious here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my personal method for getting a friction saver up into a tree. It's almost exactly like most methods you see on YouTube, but it's got a little bit of a difference. And in my opinion, this difference, well, makes a world of difference. It actually makes it a lot easier to install and a lot faster to install your friction saver. So today I'm going to be using this adjustable friction saver. It's got a big ring on one end and then this little ring on the other end connected to a Prusik. Now the Prusik allows it to slide up and down the rope, but as soon as forces are applied to it, it will lock. This um, weight is attached to what's called a throw line. And this throw line is made of a super strong material called Dyneema. There are other types of throw lines out there made out of different materials, but this is my favorite because it's light and strong. At the end, I've got a 12 ounce throw weight. There are different weight amounts that you can attach to the end of your throw line, depending on what you need to do. Um, a heavier weight is usually used when you are trying to throw over a tree that has really abrasive bark because the throw line can get easily caught if the weight is too light. So let's get to it. Before you throw it over the limb and take your shot, you simply take your throw weight and put it through the big ring, okay? And then once you put it through the big ring, you just feed only the amount you need to get it up and over the limb through the ring. So I'm gonna set this on the ground and I'm just gonna feed through only as much as I need to get up and over the limb. So this is probably more than enough. And so I'm going to set my friction saver off to the side and then redistribute my line onto the ground. It's nice to make it, you know, go kind of back and forth on top of itself. So that way it doesn't get caught on anything. Okay, and now I'm back to my throw weight. And now it's time to take a shot. Here I've got my throw line laid out. It's um, the orange, very thin string there. And there's the throw weight. Um, it's proper form to use something called a throw cube, which is a sort of carrying contraption for the throw line to keep it from getting tangled. But right now, I'm kind of a hot mess, and I've got it all kind of collected inside of this bag for climbing ropes. So if we look at the tree, the goal is going to be to get the throw weight up and over one of those limbs, you know, at the top, closer to the top. Ideally, as far up as I can get, but I'm probably going to aim for the one right in the center of the frame here because it's going to allow me to get up high enough and I can advance it any time I want. Uh, and this is just a demo, so I really don't need to push my luck here to try and get it as high as I can. I just want you to be able to see it and to be able to visualize how this is done. So I'm going to now try and use my throw weight and throw line to get up and over that limb. Really quickly, here is a close-up shot of the friction saver. And you can see the two rings and the fact that they are differently sized will come in handy 
later on. And there's the Prusik that goes up and down the length of the friction saber. So there are a number of ways that you can throw a throw weight with a throw line up into a tree. I keep it very simple. I just make these pendulum swings. And if I want to go higher up, I extend the overall length between my fingers and the weight and lower to the ground, you know, I give it a little less length. So let's give it a shot. Sometimes this takes multiple attempts, but be patient and you'll get there. So now I'm going to use the throw weight to isolate the limb, and bingo! Now all I'm going to do is pull the excess throw line out of the big ring, and this is exponentially less work than having to pull the entire throw line through this ring. So now you've already got the big ring on the throw line, okay? And the next step is to, first, if you're using an adjustable friction saver, you want to take a look at the limb that you went over and calculate where you need to place the Prusik. So I'm going to, it's better to have a little more than less. So I'm gonna do it right about here. Okay, and for safety reasons, it's ideal, although this Prusik is going to hold you pretty much every single time without fail, you never know if something might happen. So it's a good idea to take the excess that you have and tie a stopper knot in it. I just do a half hitch and that will prevent this Prusik from sliding should it fail to grip around the rope. So next, is we have to take the other side of the throw line and we're going to remove the throw weight. Okay? I have a slipped anchor hitch on here so it just comes right off. And then we're going to Take the throw line and stick it through the small ring and then we're going to retie the throw weight onto the throw line. So I've tied another slipped anchor hitch and at this point make sure that nothing is twisted and then you can begin pulling on this end here. So as you pull, you'll see that the friction saver is beginning to 
rise up on, you know, rise up from the ground. And this is exactly what it should look like. And then basically you just keep bringing it up, bringing it up, and bringing it up. So keep bringing it up until you get right to where it's just below the limb. And then I like to grab a firm grip. I like to wrap the throw line around my hand so that I have a firm grip. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull nice and hard. Ready? One, two, three. And then you see that it's now flipped over and all I need to do now is let the throw ball drop to the ground. So I'm going to let go of the throw line slowly and it's going to drop to the ground. Now that my throw weight is, or throw ball, whatever you want to call it, um, has gone to the ground and there are no obstructions in the way of my um, throw line, the next step is to connect my rope to it. So I'm going to undo the slip anchor hitch. and go get my rope. So now for the final step. As you can see, I've got my rope connected to the end of the throw line and I've got just a series of knots here to ensure that it doesn't come off. And now I'm going to pull this up So just when I get right up to the rings, I'm going to give it a solid pull. And now it's through the rings. Now you just pull it down again. Once you've got your friction saver and your rope properly installed, you are free to set up any moving rope climbing system you want. Here I'm showing a hitch climber setup which incorporates a friction hitch, a triple attachment, slack tending pulley, and um, two carabiners. So that's a personal favorite of mine. You can use a number of different setups. Um, you could even just use good old-fashioned Blake's hitch with or without a split tail. Now, here you are, ready to climb. Uh, first thing you wanna do is weight the system. So you wanna put your body weight, and ideally your body weight and someone else's, so two people's body weight, onto the limb to make sure that it is indeed life supporting. Um, sometimes limbs will look safe, but they might actually have serious fractures on them that can compromise their structural integrity. Once you've weighted the system and you're comfortable with your tie-in point, then you're ready to climb. All right, so you finished your climb. You've removed all your climbing equipment from the rope. How do you get the friction saver back to the ground? Well, this can be done in a number of different ways. Um, one way is if you have a sewn eye at one end of your rope, um, you can just simply pull on this end here and the eye will get caught in the small ring. It'll go through the big ring get caught in the small ring, 
and then it'll get pulled down from the limb by the small ring, via the rope. So that's why the ring sizes are different. Um, another method is you can take one of these mini DMM XRSE carabiners and force it through the rope. Um, it's a little bit of a process, but you can do it and you can get it through the rope and then you can just leave it on there and then this will catch on the small ring and you can pull it down. Today, I'm just gonna keep it really simple and I'm going to tie a half hitch in the end of the rope. So, this is a half hitch and this will pass through the big ring, get caught on the little ring, and then I'll be able to pull it down. Um, so let me show you how that works. I'm going to give you a close-up of the friction saver for that. So I'm going to pull the rope, and then right before it gets to the ring, I'm going to yank really hard. And then I'm going to pull it down, and watch your head when you do this. Okay, so there you have it. You can see how the half hitch got caught on the small ring and this friction saver is unharmed. It's really rugged, so you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. Um, there is a method for getting your friction saver down to the ground using a throw line, which allows you to lower it but that'll be for a different video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to subscribe, be, be sure to like this video. Check out my channel for more hitch how-tos, not tutorials and climbing videos. Bye.